we're looking at nearly 3000 exhibitors um, right now wow. on the show floor, a thousand startups in Eureka Park alone. So when you think about that scale, we're going to see everything from those major brands uh, that, you know, Amazon, AMD yeah. to Google all the way to those um, startups at Eureka Park. And by the way, when I talk about that 100,000 attendee number, about a third of that is going to be from outside the United States. So CES is still going to be a major global show, um, which has always been. And it's just great to see that continue into 2023. That was Brian Kaminsky, the director of thematic programs at the Consumer Technology Association. And he's talking about CES, the annual technology trade show that happens each year in Las Vegas on the first week of January. This is where we find out the latest and greatest things that are happening in the tech world, from gadgets to gizmos to electronic cars, you name it, it's at this show. Now, after the past two years dealing with the pandemic, CES 2023 is suited to be huge. How huge? Well, that's what I asked Brian to begin our conversation. In terms of attendance, we're looking at crossing over that 100,000 attendees uh, mark, which we're really excited about to have so many folk back in person. Uh, in terms of the show itself, we're looking at about 70% greater footprint than CES 2022. So really a lot of that momentum growth. Sorry, um, did you say 70%? 70% bigger than CES 2022. Oh <laughs> so what what else do you expect to see um, in terms of robots? Because we, we we see a lot of, I've seen so many robots and I, it just brings a little kid in me when I when I see them on the show floor. I could imagine that category has just grown a lot over the last couple of years. Certainly. And I think when we think about robotics, robotics itself as a technology, along with artificial intelligence, right? Automation generally is very horizontal where it optimizes and improves so many other vertical category areas. Um, and so obviously we're going to see a lot of companion robotics that I think are going to be really pushing forward assistive technologies for the elderly also just can, you know, robotic vacuums or robotic floor washers that can help improve and get rid of mundane tasks. And I, I know we'll see robotic servers for the front of house for restaurants as well, those companion robotics, but there's a great enterprise tech story that always is occurring in the background as well at CES. And this is one of those times where I see that the uh, utility of the awkward box for enterprise, but also there's government applications. And that's why we would oftentimes, we started calling robotics digital utilities almost. They're no longer optional upgrades. They're becoming necessities in order to automate just how much work that we're doing a day and help make humans just more productive and efficient. As we move towards electric vehicles, I wanted to ask Brian what we can expect to see at CES in regards to electric transportation and setting up that electric grid. I mean, electrification is going to be such a major show theme. So over in West Hall, which is essentially sold out, the newest exhibit hall of Las Vegas Convention Center, you're going to see a lot of the auto exhibitors and the entire electrification system is going to be on display. And that's going to be by land, by sea, and by air. We're going to have some unveiling of new uh, electric vehicle models for the road, like the Dodge Ram EV pickup from Stellantis. We're going to see electric boats. Uh, we have Marine Tech as a new exhibit area in general for the show this year, but we'll oh. see from Candela an electric boat, the C8, um, and even, of course, electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles, so like your flying cars. So Rise will showcase their recon, but beyond the vehicles, Blink Charging is going to be there showcasing that charging infrastructure, and naturally with anything with mobility, there's certainly going to be a lot of live demos of those cars. CES 2023 is very different from other ones in the past because this is really the first one that we're coming out of the pandemic. CES 2021 was virtual only. CES 2022 was kind of a hybrid model, but this will be the first one where everybody is back. And I was talking to Brian about the importance of having that face-to-face -face connection with other people in the tech industry. Uh, that's why I go every year. It's it's not only the tech, but it's just meeting, having the entire tech world together in one city at the same time. Uh, there's nothing like it. Certainly, and I and I say too, like it, from just a practicality uh, standpoint, ninety five percent of people say we know this from a, a, the Harvard Business Review. Say face to face meetings are critical to successfully building any relationship, and we know ninety four percent of CES in CES twenty twenty. 94% of exhibitors said their annual sales were influenced by CES. So there's a sales impact to it as well as meeting. So 
it's great from a social connection standpoint, but also clearly to the bottom line to a degree uh, for these companies. So looking forward to hearing some more of those success stories that happen as a result of, of, of kind of the momentum that's building into the show. Well, Brian, I want to thank you for, you know, telling about talking about CES 2023. I'm looking forward. You got me pumped. I'm ready to start packing. Uh, and I look forward to meeting you when I'm down there. I look forward to meeting you as well. Thank you for having me. And just from this conversation, I'm even more pumped to yeah. go there. So Andy, thank you. And uh, looking forward to catching up with you in person. If you're interested in CES 2023, make sure you follow me on social media as I report directly from the show floor.